So um, I think it's already 10. So yeah. I, I uh, feel like we we'll probably have to skip this last little section, but <laughs> don't want to keep folks on too long. But uh, what I will say is that this last little section was um, uh, mostly some kind of history of socialism in the U S but I think it actually fits better with um, organizing. So let me go to that slide here. Um, Next month is our uh, Organizing 101 uh, live stream where we talk, you know, we talked about the Green Party first, we talked about socialism today. And so we want to take all the ideas from all that and talk about what does that mean for your personal organizing in your community and how you can be part of the green movement overall. Um, so I think, you know, some of these questions about learning from history kind of belong in that organizing talk. What can we learn from history about how to organize ourselves today? Um, so there's definitely some great things to learn there from the socialist movements and the radical union movements in U.S. history, um, you know, up to the founding of the Green Party itself, which was kind of an outgrowth of the fact that, um, the, you know, the old socialist party and the old radical unions um, were beaten back by capitalism. And um, a lot of those uh, early members and unions were, were essentially co-opted and, and pulled into the Democratic Party. And that's why you haven't really seen a strong left since the end of World War II. It's all been co-opted into the Democrats. Um, so, you know, we can learn from that and the experience of the radical independent unions and parties before that point and how they won their struggles and what that means for us today. Um, yeah, and when you look at, you know, some of the projects, like, uh, you know, some of the socialist projects in history, like, the you know, Soviet Union and China, um, you know, a big thing when it came to the, you know, the dawn of the, the birth of the Green Party, um, you know, at the time that the Green Party was coming, you know, was coming up in the late 70s and the 80s, a lot of the socialist energy, a lot of the socialist organization had tied themselves to the Soviet Union or to China, who both had very progress and you know domination based you know systems they were modernizing and they were industrializing and they were just, you know the environment was a resource with which to be exploited um and so where the greens kind of started to differ was to you know to say no we need to and they weren't the first ones obviously to have these thoughts these thoughts mm -hmm. have been you know swirling through the socialist movement since its dawn um but it was you know the green movement rose to say um, you know, no, we need to build a socialism that is, you know, fits into ecological standards and ecological, you know, abilities and things like that. Um, and so that, you know, that kind of difference at the time was, was it was a, a kind of a shift. We were trying, you know, it was, it was a shift of, with, you know, with people like Bookshin and Howie, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pushing for a different kind of socialism. Uh, than what we had seen in, in practice. Um, and you know, the socialism at that point that we had seen in practice, and even today when we, you know, like we talked about Venezuela and it being a petro state, um, you know, they aren't that the, the, the progress is often at the expense of the environment. Um, so. Yeah, so I think, uh, I think leave it there. Um, were there any uh, questions that weren't answered? So Michael Shinnett also wanted to ask summaries of different socialisms in other parties, um, like CPUSA, SPUSA, Socialist Alternative, PSL, Revolutionary Communist Party, so Socialist Workers Party. Um, so a lot of them came out of the old Socialist Party, right? Socialist Party USA, PSL, Worker of the World Party. Um, were all splits from the Debsian uh, Socialist Party. Um, I can't, I can speak, you know, a little bit to Socialist Party USA as a former member um, and friends of people who are still members. Um, they are very much a multi-tendency party, um, much like the Green Party, which means that you have, you know, Marxist-Leninists working alongside anarcho-communists um, working alongside Maoists, right? Um, and, and to varying degrees of, of success. Um, 
when I was a member of the, the Socialist Party USA, there was, it was in the middle of a big um, anarcho-communist swing. Um, so it, it took a very strong swing to the bottom left. And I actually, from watching a little, I think it swung back again. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, that's the reality is these are small parties. Um, you know, if you show up with 100 people, you can move things um, in terms of the, the discussions. Um, Socialist Alternative is a Trotskyite party. Um, they, they're, uh, so that, that's their, um, where they're coming from ideologically. Um, PSL has trot roots in some ways. Um, they also seem to, they also tend to float a little more top left nowadays towards MLM. Um, I will, you know, one thing I will say about PSL and the organization is, you know, they organize themselves very much as a vanguard party, um, which means, you know, they, they have very strict rules on, you know, political education and um, they're very centralized in their, their, their structure. Uh, whereas the Green Party is very decentralized. And, you know, the ideal of the Green Party, uh, the power lies in locals, which then filters up to the state party, which then filters up to the, uh, you know, the national federation. And we can have another conversation another time about whether that's successful or, or whether it can be successful. Um, but, you know, that is a, a very different, um, you know, position than the democratic centralism that, that is central to PSL. Um, I'll say on the Communist Party USA at this point, they're Democrats. Um, you know, when it, when it comes to their electoral work, um, they, they endorse Democrat after Democrat when it comes to you know, national politics. And, um, I think they have a new kind of rising, more radical youth perspective um, from my interactions online. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm 37, so when I was growing up, you know, it, it moving through socialist uh, organizations, CPUSA wasn't even on the table um, because they were basically just a reformist organization. Um, you know, and all, of, and, and if, you know, we, we've been very intentional about giving a social, eco socialism one on one workshop from a green perspective. And, um, you know, these kind of workshops would look very different coming from the different organizations and who they centered, who they quoted, um, that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, I, I think what's important right now as socialists in the United States is to understand that if we all combined today, we'd still be minuscule. Um, you know, it, 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 not that electoralism should be used as a, um, you know, an overly important metric to our organizing. Um, but if all the leftist parties in this country unified and voted for the same presidential candidate, we're still looking at maybe 2% on our best year. Um, right, so we're, we're at a stage right now where I think we really need to embrace, and we'll talk way more about this in the organizing one on one next month, but you know, I really think we need to embrace uh, multiplicity tactics um, where we put away the Marxist Leninist versus MLM versus anarchist fight uh, and, and work to support each other. Um, because we, we, and this kind of goes back to what we talked about at the very beginning, right? That, that we need to be, uh, make sure we're centering the values of what we're trying to, to, to build and we need to, you know, find common ground with these organizations. Um, you know, if you've got an active SPUSA in your area, um, I had a, my chapter is gone. It's a long story about why my chapter is gone and it's why I'm not in SPUSA anymore. Um, but when we had a when we had a socialist party in town, um, every single event that the Green Party or Socialist Party did, we both did. Um, we we were basically permanent. We weren't, you know, we didn't merge organizations, but we were term, permanent collaborators with each other. Because the Socialist Party had an idea for a rally, the Green Party almost always signed on, and vice versa. Um, you know, so I think that's where we need to be. We need, like, like we've said, no one's figured this out. Right. If one of us had all the answers, we'd have a mass party to join. <laughs> right now, that's not the reality. And so the, the reality is we all need to accept that we don't have the answers. Um, I always tell people, if you meet someone that, that thinks they have all the answers, you need to run and you need to run fast. Um, because that person is, 
has an agenda, you're probably not a core part of it, um, <laughs> you know, because yeah. nobody has these answers. Um, so what we need to we need to center multiple multiplicity of tactics. We need to center a radical solidarity um, that lets us give support to each other, and we need to kind of uplift and empower each other through all of our different organizations to see which one of us has comes up with the idea, nails the tactic that all of a sudden gives us the avenue to build the mass party that we need to you know, really affect change, the mass organization that we need to really affect change. So, you know, I, I think that's where we're at when it comes to all these other, other organizations. We need to do a lot less of the, you know, sectarian bickering about our, our you know, specific policy points and uh, find points of unity and points of collaboration because, um, you know, we, we, it started at the first international, right? <laughs> Where one group stormed out and didn't work with the other, um, and it's a you know that's a it's a generational you know bad habit that we need to break on the left. Um, you know when when when, it, when we start figuring things out, when people start actually building mass parties, then we can you know get into working this stuff out. But you know right now we're we're fighting each other over the you know to throw out a random number, the 10% we don't agree on, and we're ignoring the 90% we do. Um, so, you know, I think that's really key for the left, especially in the United States. And, and this is something, I, until I went to Europe and met with Greens in Europe, I never really grasped it. I never thought about, since, you know, since we're in a US-centric, you know, discussion here, the complexities of organizing in a continental nation of 300 people, 300 million people, are is just mind blowing. Right? <laughs> the oh, work yeah. that I need to do in Illinois is so different from the work Garrett needs to do, which is so different from the work of someone in Texas, which is so different from the work of someone in Washington or California or so, right? Um, and so it's just, and when I when I talk with Dutch Greens, I realized. They can get anywhere in the country in two hours by public transportation. <laughs> Their right. organizing models are just substantively different from ours. The challenges they face are just substantively yeah. different, and it's That's, not. Uh, it's the, not just the you know the fact that they have proportional representation and all that kind of stuff um, and fair, fair ballot access. It's that geographics is an important part of our movements. Yeah, I I was gonna jump in there and agree <laughs> but you know i um something that comes up a lot um whether it's the green party or or any other organization or party um you know it's that it's 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 so hard to organize um and usually folks will say that in kind of this this negative context like um you know oh the the green party doesn't have anyone in congress so i shouldn't bother you know that kind of thing um and not to make it all about electoralism, but the point is more, um, I think a lot of folks don't realize, you know, the challenges that we have organizing in the United States compared to, for example, say Europe, which is um, a lot more interconnected in the EU. <laughs> you can They have public transit. That's not really a thing that exists in most of the US. Um, a lot of European cities are very urban and, you know, a lot of the US is very rural. <laughs> You know, um, you know, there's there's huge parts of it that are agricultural, like like Chris was saying in Illinois um, and across the country. Um, it, there's so many different um, ecologies. You know, we, we go from forests to swamps to desert to, <laughs> to Arctic tundra and a lot, you know, like um, there's so many different challenges and all involved in organizing the United States that um, we shouldn't get discouraged. Um, but we should also, you know, recognize that uh, just because the Green Party in the U.S., for example, hasn't grown as quickly as the Green Party in Europe or Australia or something like that, um, you know, it doesn't mean that we can't have a movement here. It just means that we have to we have to think about it differently. We have to structure it differently because we're facing different challenges. We're facing different organizing conditions, different uh, material conditions, <laughs> as Chris was saying, right? So. Um, you know, solving all these answers or all these problems is, is part of our, um, our goal here. Um, and 
that's why there is no one solution. There's no one blueprint on how to do this. Just everyone, every community, every region is going to have to do something a little bit different. Um, and that's okay. Um, especially if, um, even though we're doing things a little bit differently, we have that radical solidarity that we are there to support each other, to learn from each other, to, to present workshops like this and say, here's what I did in my community. It may or may not work for you, but I want to tell you what worked for us. And maybe that'll inspire people. Maybe we can literally send physical organizers to help people. We can send money to help people. You know, there's, there's ways we can express solidarity, even if we're not all doing the same thing. I think that's it. If you, I saw you reaching for the bookshelf, Chris. I wasn't sure if you had something else to add. I was putting something away. I was putting the Rudolph rocker away. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But so, yeah, you know, to transition it out, you know, out, um, you know, like like we have in the slide, we've got our organizing one hundred and one coming up next month. Mm -hmm. It's on June twenty eighth at eight pm. Uh, you can go to uh, greensocialist.net slash one hundred and ones. Uh, and register will also be streaming that one on YouTube like this one. Um, so yeah, uh, check us out and we'll see you next month. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.